Saturday, 8th of July, 2023. Cameroonian-born football superstar Kylian Mbappe receives traditional blessings and protection from his people in Jebale in, in Douala 4 subdivision. The PSG gold poacher also spent time reviving hopes in some school kids in Douala. Plus, national vaccination teams are reaching out to kids against measles and rubella. And as the campaign pulls to a close, CRTV takes a closer look at the causes, prevention and treatment. The people and Christians in Marwa now have a completed church edifice to sing the Gloria in the Chelsea's day and say their prayers to God. The Our Lady of Assumption Cathedral was dedicated today with the Head of State's representative Paula Tanganji present. Those are the top stories. I am Benin Bumagana. This is the 7.30 News. A former separatist fighter has re revealed that all six divisional delegates kidnapped in the division two years ago were killed by a known state armed group led by Soto General Ten Kobo. The former separatist fighter Clinton Tamaya has promised to take defense and security forces to the mass grave of the slain divisional delegates. The repentant fighter Clinton Tamaya also said the self styled General Ten Kobo died of bullet wounds he sustained during a military raid months ago. Larry Evander with details. His narrative paints a mastery of trails of the kidnap of six divisional delegates in Ekundo Titi on June 15, 2021. Ten Kobo took us there to wait and ambush the military. Unfortunately, the six divisional delegates who were in a taxi became our victim. We took them to our hideout in Kika and later transferred them to Ndo Forest that night. After a while, Tenkobo received calls from the diaspora urging him to kill the captives, promising to make him field marshal for Ndian should he kill all six delegates. The 24-year-old penitent member of a non-state armed group reveals that their self-styled leader, General Ten Kobo, was however not crowned field marshal. He sustained injuries after a military raid and died later. But his adherents vowed not to make his demise public, but rather said he had retreated to a neighboring country. Tamayan Clinton was received after dropping his arms in Kumba Thursday by the SDO for Meme. We tell others in the bushes that the Papa SDO Meme is waiting for us to welcome us. That Clinton Papa says he is ready to work with defense and security forces, not only to lead them to separatist hideouts, but to confirm his narrative by showing the mass grave of the killed divisional delegates and that of the late dreaded general Ten Kobo. The Our Lady of Assumption Cathedral of Marwa Funange has been dedicated to God in a ceremony attended by the Head of State Representative Paul Atanganji, Minister of Territorial Administration. The cathedral is a heart-shaped architectural piece blossoming with paintings of biblical figures dressed in traditional regalia typical of the natives of the area. The Archbishop of Garwa, His Grace Foster Ambassador Jodo, performed the consecration rites Marking the making the cathedral ready for use. Beatrice Losamba reports. Through this symbolic act, the building is transformed into a place where God lives. Other rituals would make the Our Lady of the Assumption Cathedral of Marwa Funangi ready to worship in. The burning of incense, the singing of litanies, and special prayers said by the host of bishops and clergy present to invoke the presence of God, make the cathedral a house of prayer, the gate to heaven. We thank God. We thank the head of state. We thank our benefactor. This cathedral is a wonderful place for prayer, for the meditation for unity for all the people of God. This all happens before the eyes of the head of state's representative, 
the Minister of Territorial Administration, Paula Tanganji, flanked by important guests, the elite and diocesans whose names have been engraved on the church walls for their contribution in funding the project. The brightness in the church does not just come from the colorful costumes of its occupants. The walls are paved, anointed with paintings that tell Bible stories. The characters all dressed in the traditional fabric and designs of the Far North region. The painters and architects are from the University of Marua's Faculty of Fine Arts. The walls, pillars, flooring and roof done with stones, marbles and material collected from the surroundings, reinforcing that the people brought their assets and gifts to contribute in building the house of God, which looks like a typical hut in these parts. The, the drawings can represent the people and their culture. And when we put today culture and spirituality together, it means something and it's very good for the people of God. A cathedral the people had expected for 26 years. Its construction started six years ago. The cathedral has 3,600 sitting spaces to help expand the word of God in this 50-year-old Marwa Mukolo diocese. Let's say a word about the end of the parliamentary session. As members of the Upper House of Parliament, the Senate spend their last hours in Yaoundé. Before going back to their constituents, they are all unanimous on the fact that the session was a success. Senate correspondent Sidoni Jobmandi edited their reactions in the following report. The second ordinary session for the 2023 legislative year was a busy one, according to new senators. All is not very new. Uh, to me and in fact it was very intense with a lot of bills that came to us for examination from the government and I think uh, I saw all the committees doing their work. Senators have given in their own input during this session. One of the most strategic things that came to us was the new reform that the head of state brought in a couple of years back on the budgetary orientation debate. Senators have given in their own input on what we want this be, the budget of next year to look like. The June session characterized by committees meeting and plenary sittings was a typical evaluation process. Nine very valuable piece of legislations that will have to impact greatly on the life of our populations and particularly our respective constituencies. The bill adopted by lawmakers was done according to interests of Cameroonians. Senators worked in synergy in order to build a better Cameroon by adopting these bills. In the course of adoption, there have been a number of questions they filed to ministers. This session was mostly dedicated to budgetary orientation debate and 11 bills have been adopted. Children between 1 to 5 years old are currently receiving vaccinations to stall the spread of measles, rubella in the country. With the help of mobile teams, the expanded program on immunization is able to carry out its mission in all 10 regions of the country. The campaign ends Monday with expected number of 5.5 million kids vaccinated. Yoti Kaleli Songa reports. Reaching for a 90% coverage at least to prevent the spread of measles and rubella in Cameroon. The expanded program on immunization has been on the offensive, giving shots to children between 9 and 59 months of age. The target for a good result is to reach 95% coverage at the national level and at least 90% for every subnational level, that is regional level, district and health area level, to have a good immunity across the country and stop the spread of the of the current outbreak. We have expected to reach at least 5.5 million children. The geographical coverage rate is of utmost importance. With daily updates, they are able to analyze data and promise areas affected by poor weather conditions during the campaign that their time will come. There will be a catch-up, catch-up specific to the uh, context of the uh, affected area. Even after the five-day free immunization campaign, parents are implored to continue with routine vaccines. It is very important for all children vaccinated during the campaign to continue normal schedule in routine immunization at nine months and 15 months for both measles and rubella. So it is not the end of the protection. This, they say, is the only way to stall the spread of viruses. Vaccinations, they add, boosts the immune system giving one a better chance of survival.
when there is an outbreak. As vaccination teams continue to reach huge numbers with the vaccine, our newsroom takes a closer look at what measles and rubella are, how they affect pregnant women and children, and how they can be prevented or treated. Faith Nguang. Two silent airborne killers, measles and rubella, highly contagious diseases that share the same signs and symptoms. Both ailments caused by ribonucleic acid viruses claim thousands of lives annually. Measles is a more severe form. Its incubation period is about 10 to 14 days, after which the, the, the child starts receiving, uh, noticing very high fever. And then you may also have upper, signs of upper, upper respiratory tract infections. Rubella is like a, a junior brother to measles, you know, uh, but it's also infectious when transmitted to the fetus. It may lead to uh, multiple organ malformations. Science is yet to find medication for measles and rubella. Once affected, the virus would have to run its course. However, there exist tips to manage the symptoms. Once you have the preliminary signs, which are high fever, runny nose, sneezing, coughing, uh, discharging uh, eyes, redness, then you start enumerating these symptoms which are signs of different uh, organ involvement and we treat along the lines. If the child has pneumonia, we treat for pneumonia. Children who get rubella usually have a mild case of rash and some respiratory symptoms, but it can be more fatal for baby in the womb. With measles, the main complication can be pneumonia due to the measles virus itself. Other complications include otitis media and diarrhea from secondary infections. Now come with me to Douala where Kylian Bappe is back home, at least for a visit. The uh, footballer was received, arrived in Douala this morning on an official visit and has been lauded for his humanitarian uh, activities. This was during his visit at the Bonandale Primary School in the Douala Force Subdivision where his foundation is carrying out some renovation works. He was accompanied by Littoral Governor Samuel Jerome Ivaha Diboa. This was in the presence of the Minister of Sports and Physical Education, Narcisse Moele Kombi, the President of Gondo, His Majesty uh, Frederick Ekwala Esaka, and a host of administrative and traditional dignitaries. Cynthia Etim with details from Sierra TV Littoral in Douala. Upon arrival at the Douala International Airport, the world football superstar of Cameroonian origin, Kylian Mbappe, was received by the governor of the littoral region, Samuel Dodeneva Dibois, accompanied by his état major. In a convoy, Kylian Mbappe and the delegation then hit the road to the Douala Force subdivision where he made a first stopover at Esperance Divin Balingual Nesram Primary School in Sodiko. The school, which is opened to IDPs, has benefited from the largesse of the Kylian Mbappe's foundation. About 50 meters away, the football star made another stopover at the government Balingual Primary School Bonendale where he saw for himself work on the structure undergoing renovation thanks to financing from his foundation. All through his movement amidst tight security, the superstar was chaired by a mammoth crowd amongst them administrative and traditional authorities from Douala and beyond. Both young and old, the onlookers could not hide their excitement seeing him live and direct some for their first time. I'm so happy, I'm so happy to see Kylian, I dream to play like Kylian. I dream to play like Kylian, but he's a good player. But we are so happy. We are so happy to receive our son who have come to be closer and see his people. What he has seen, I'm sure this is going to encourage him to, to invest more in Cameroon. Kylian Bappe and his delegation then headed to the Bonasama River banks where they took a boat ride on the River Vuri and route to Jebale, his fatherland, which awaits the arrival of the son of the soil. And with that huge crowd, it was even very difficult to see Kylian Bappe. A BAPC candidate in the West region with special needs who took the exams only after the intervention of the Minister of Secondary Education has mesmerized everyone with a brilliant result. 
18 year old Gabi Roche Gufak Gista, living with a disability, and her mother insisted for Gabi to take the exams against the wishes of many. Today, Hakina, fascinated by her success, much to the impish glee of her mother and friends, Alice Classic Denchang. Kelvin Nembo tells us the story. It was a cold and rainy afternoon, packed with emotion, starting even before the results of the birthday were released here at Government High School Chang. <laughs> Tears of joy flew down the cheeks of many for 18-year-old Gabi Rushegufak Jitsa with multiple disabilities, yet discriminated against on a daily basis, successfully passed her BPC exam. Given that she can't walk on her own, hold a pen and write properly, has a lot of difficulty speaking fluently, she needed special care and attention throughout. Our state is fighting for the inclusive education. I have just to obey and respect the law. She's a young Cameroonian who deserves education. Parents of such, such children should send them to school. We are there for all the children. Voici un exemple, un enfant polyhandicapé qui a un BPC. C'est un espoir pour la société. Gabi Roche Gufak Jitsa says she has plans to create an association to fight for the rights of the physically challenged, especially the right to education. Share her story to inspire her peers not to ever give up despite the myriad of life's challenges. As it is said, we can do all things through Christ that strengthened us. This time, a PhD thesis on the question of civil disobedience and violence in the uh, uh, neighborhood that is by Hannah Arendt's political thoughts, uh, defended by Dr. Isidore Pakum, has proposed an urgent need to tackle civil disorder and chaos in order to protect the life and property. The thesis defended yesterday in Yaoundé the raised different forms of civil disorder and propose solutions on how to overcome them. Faith Nguang reports. Cheers, well deserved for Isidore Pakum, who has just moved a stage higher in his life. He will henceforth be addressed as Dr. Isidore Pakum. This title he owes to his public thesis defense entitled The Question of Civil Disobedience and Violence in the Light of Hannah Arendt's Political Thoughts. According to Dr. Pakum, the solution to the various chaos prevailing in nations today would be the education of masses. With respect to the unrest in the northwest and southwest, with respect to what is happening in the northern region with Boko Haram insurgency, so if our Cameroonian youth or if our Cameroonian citizens are well educated, it will go a long way to put an end to civil and violence. The years of research and the 15 minutes clear presentation of his work earned him the score of 16 on 20. The jury explains why. He has tried to, to tackle the problem profoundly by taking in account the history of his obedience in antiquity. Human work, far from being perfect, members of the jury urged the new doctor to revisit some shortcomings noted in his work so that this work would approach perfection. The work we are talking about, the PhD thesis, is on the question of civil disobedience and violence in the light of Hannah Arendt's political thought. It was defended by Dr. Isidopa Kom. On to something else, some students and pupils on holiday in the North Regional Capital, Garwa, have registered on computer for computer and language courses at the Garwa Regional Linguistic Center. Most of the students say it is a great opportunity to get some mastery of both the French and English languages. Tanjong Levis Agbo reports. Students and pupils from different establishments on holiday taking lessons on English language. They are at the foundation modules A and B of the bilingual training. To them, it is vital to engage in such an educative activity. I am a student of government high school, Gawajambutu. I came to the language center 
to study English. The Garwa Regional Linguistic Center is playing its role in the teaching and assessment process of the learners while taking into account the linguistic needs of all students and pupils. We do take children aged from three upward because the English that they are taught at school is not always uh, what we teach here. The accent, the intonations. Apart from bilingual training, Holiday makers are equally having lessons on computer science and ICT. They have a one hour of computer sciences because they have four hours of video lessons, four hours of uh, course book lessons, and they have one hour in the self access. That's 10 hours per week within four weeks. Having a better mastery of the two official languages in Cameroon is a major attraction for some young people in Garoua. This holiday language classes is just in time to develop skills. Leisure grounds in Yaoundé have been receiving a greater number of kids as the holiday grows older. Our reporter Clovis Bowe visited some of these playgrounds, watched the kids play and reports that such moments offer parents an opportunity to bond with their kids. The facial expression says it all. It is holiday season and there is no way better to take these kids out of their closets. Our duty here is to make children to be happy, like learning them songs, guiding them when they are playing, and we are also there to make them to learn how to count because when they are jumping, we are learning them how to count maybe from 1 to 10, the 12 months of the year, the 7 days of the week and all the rest. With a variety of games made available, there is no room for boredom. We have trampoline where children come to play, they jump and also we have toboggan when they can slice and we have a co branch. This one is for children for 5 to 12 years and here we have 3 to 5 years. And that is all the ages for from 3 to 12 years old. Screams and shouts only tell of one thing. The children are having a good time. I'm playing with my friend and we are happy. I am very happy to play with my friend. We are jumping and we are happy. The parents on the other side can't help it but watch their kids display. It's a platform for them to come and relax, you know. Go out of the school environment and get something different, have fun, get to meet other kids. This somehow awakens nostalgic feelings. It brings me back when I was a kid, even though I didn't have the opportunity that they have now. But then, you know, at every level of life, you have, you have your own recreational activities at your level. This move by parents and guardians is to find ways of bonding with their kids after nine months in school and familiarizing with the environment. A team from the Road Fund is on an inspection mission in the West Region to assess work on the road projects financed by the fund. The delegation, led by El Haj Umaru, held a working session with the Governor of the West Region, our Fonkar Augustine, before inspecting roadworks in the Mifi, Kunki and Day Divisions. Details with Fem Bunyu Ayise, CRTV West. Some 20 projects are currently being financed by the Road Fund Mission in the West Region. Projects which require close scrutiny by officials of the Road Fund presently in the West Region on an inspection visit. First up, Bamungum in Bavasam 3 to assess work done on the bridge linking Basse to Bapi. There, the team head found at the shoddy job, which is contrary to recommendations made during his last visit. Over in the Kunki, the road mission stops by to take a look at the rehabilitation work on the road linking Kasap to Kamdem in Bayangam and later on in Bangonte in Day Division. There, El Hajo Maru and his team members observe some lapses in the execution of the road projects. On the spot, Recommendations are made and contractors warned of imminent suspension should they falter as they are reminded that the government of Cameroon invests billions of CFA friends annually for roadworks to the benefit of the populations who require nothing short of a good job. The General Assembly of the Executive Bureau of the Chamber of Agriculture, Fisheries, Livestock and Forest has ended in Yaoundé with commitment taken to imitate the Dutch 
project, among other foreign systems of agriculture, in boosting the economy of Cameroon. The three-day meeting presided over by the president of the chamber, Minjos Momeni Martin, also saw the adoption of a new roadmap, which we hear in this report by Victor Siga. The General Assembly had at the center of discussions examining and adopting a new roadmap and a review of resolutions arrived at during the 20th session. For three days, executive bureau members of the Chamber of Agriculture, Fisheries, Livestock and Forestry brainstormed on the administrative account as well as the 2022 performance report. Some of the things that we talk about, we have started already uh, about the Dutch project to boost of our economy. We have other projects that are coming up that Chambers of Agriculture is working with the farmers and the honorables. Preoccupied with the poor output of some sectors of production, members are unanimous about copying from foreign example. This foreign partners that have come is just one among many and I think they are well, well equipped and they, are, they have engaged and we too are engaged with them. The General Assembly of the Executive Bureau of the Chamber of Agriculture, Fisheries, Livestock and Forest was an opportunity for some personnel to receive their attestations after undergoing training in fish farming. Let's talk some politics now. Militants of the CPD and Mezam 1B section have renewed their commitment to the party in line with the socioeconomic achievements attained within the 32 subdivisions by some members of the party elected into office. The section president, Kletus Anye Matoya, reminded party supporters of their unflinching support to the party in forthcoming elections. Sylvie Banta reports from Bamenda. Statutorily, an enlarged conference of the CPDM party holds twice a year, but because of the necessity of this ordinary conference regrouping the different sections of the party, this had to be now. We have about a year plus to go. We wanted them to present the balance sheet to the electorate. We equally want to reassure the party that as a, as a party we are moving as a block. The party's member of parliament and mayors took turns during the meeting to outline their achievements within the past three years of their stewardship. We have enacted so many laws and uh, we, we, I, I gave a brief rundown of the most recent one which has been the law on the, the higher education, the orientation on higher education, which has brought in so much innovation. We have uh, the low cost housing, which is about 307 million. We have uh, another fake construction, 650 million. We have a uh, multi purpose hall. We have municipal road, 27 million. We have acquired a front end loader and a truck. The CPDM Mesa 1B members have renewed their commitment and promised victory for the party at forthcoming elections. Elections Cameroon staff also used the opportunity to register eligible voters. The newly constructed Paco Vita in Garoa will officially be open to the public next week after an inauguration ceremony. Even before the inauguration ceremony, Mercy Ashu Nyabeyo presents the facility constructed by the Civil Engineering Corps of the military. Here is our report. It promises to be Garoa's major sporting complex in the days ahead and sits on a surface area of 20 hectares of land in the Njumasi neighborhood of Garoa. Welcome to Pakuvita in Garoa. It is here that inhabitants of Garoa and its environs will begin enjoying sporting events and facilities of what many have described as a precious gift to the nation known for its sporting giants. Pakuvita is a sporting infrastructure, a gift from the head of state, a structure with 21 facilities. The sports complex comprises of a police post, a health unit, a fitness room, several sporting platforms, and a parking space capable of hosting 500 vehicles during events. In the friendly match today, we hear that uh, the under-17 Lions beat their Moroccan counterpart two goals to zero. The two goals were scored by the captain of the team in the second half of the game. Now onto this holiday, uh, 
Championship. Ten teams are taking part in the second edition of the holiday tournament, dubbed Championnat Emergence Sport Vacances in Simeon, around the three municipality. The tournament will run from July 8 to August 19. During the kickoff today, the promoter Roland D. Fuda said it will be an opportunity to foster uh, links of living together between youths in the area. Details with Romeo Kenyi. Match day in Simeon. No one is exempted. Hawkers are around and white kids rush to the football arena under trees. The public awaits for kickoff. As action intensifies, the goals netted get the younger ones excited. This tournament is aimed at galvanizing youth and shown bad behaviors. We will also organize health campaigns during this period. Ten teams are taking part in this year's second edition of the holiday tournament. We will have special prizes like the best player, best team president and best coaches this year. On final day on August 19, the cup winners we have 300,000 CFA franc. The same amount will be given to the championship leaders. Cameroon's delegation to this year's World Paralytics Championship has left the country for Paris, France. The 15 athletes with disabilities say they are positive about qualifying for the 2024 Paralympics still in France. The Games kick off on the 17th of July. Daniel Lekonde reports. Cameroon's athletes with special needs have just one objective as they head to the World Para-Athletics Championships in France, qualify for the Paris 2024 Paralympics. The athletes left the country this Friday to compete with their peers from more than 100 countries across the globe. Charles Atangana, who scooped three medals in the 2022 Dubai Grand Prix in sprinting, is upbeat about the mission. The sprinter who competes in 100 and 400 meter heats says he wants not only medals, but a place in the Olympic Games for athletes with disabilities next year. This consignment leaving for the World Championships, which start this Saturday at the Chalité Stadium in Paris, will be joined by another already at the Games Village. One of them is Mawe Fokwa Arlet, who took silver in short put at the 2022 Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. The 15 Cameroonian representatives at the World Championships are under the National Paralympic Commission, whose president, Jean-Jacques Dundoumou, is already in France. Thank you very much for watching the 7.30 News. At 8.30, Atta Badinoma is going to be here with the news in the French language. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a very wonderful weekend. God bless you.